Welcome to this third video about two-way ANOVA. In this video, we'll calculate the two-way ANOVA by hand. Before you watch this video, I recommend that you first watch the video where I show how to calculate the one-way ANOVA by hand. As an example, we'll here use data from the growth of plants after four weeks of different treatments. Four independent plants are used for each combination of the two treatments. Note that this is a balanced data set which means that we do not need to worry about type 1, 2 or 3 models. The plants are independent in all groups, so we use the between-between ANOVA. The two factors in this study involve temperature and watering. In total, we have 24 plants. These are split into three groups that are exposed to different temperatures, cold, warm and hot. In addition, in each temperature group, Half of the plants are exposed to a low amount of watering, and the other half is exposed to a high amount of watering. We'll now compute the two way ANOVA by hand. Let x, i, j, k denote the absurd value for plant k in group i, the temperature group, and in group j, which relates to the watering factor. For example, this plant has a height of about 15 decimeters. It belongs to the second temperature group and the second watering group, and it is the fourth plant in this subgroup. And this is plant number three in the same group. This plant belongs to the third temperature group and the first watering group. It is the second observation in this group, and denotes the total number of plants in each group, which is four in our example. A represents the number of levels in the temperature group, which is three, and B denotes the number of levels of the watering group, which is 2 since we only expose the plants to either low or high amount of watering. Let's first calculate the means within each group. For example, the mean height of the plants exposed to cold temperature and a low amount of watering is 5. And the mean height for the plants exposed to warm temperature and a high amount of watering is 13. We store the means for each group to be used in later calculations. Next, we calculate the grand mean, which is the mean of all observations in all groups. We simply sum the height of all plants and divide by the total number of plants. We see that the grand mean has been rounded to 9.17. Next, we calculate the sum of squares within the groups. This is done by summing the square differences between the absurd values and the mean of their corresponding group. For example, the mean of this group, which is 5, is subtracted from the observations in this group. Whereas the observations in this group are subtracted by the mean value of 16. We see that the sum of squares within groups, or the sum of squared error, SSE, is 68. Next, we calculate the mean of each treatment group separately. We therefore now look at the two factors independently from each other. For example, the mean height of the plants exposed to cold temperature is 5, and the mean height of the 8 plants grown in warm temperature is 11.5. The mean of the 12 plants that receive a low amount of watering is 7, whereas the mean of the 12 plants that receive a high amount of watering is 11.33. We can now calculate the sum of squares between groups for the factor of temperature by the following formula. Where n is the number of observations in each group, and b is the number of levels in the watering group, which is multiplied by the sum of the square differences between the means of the three groups and the grand mean. The sum of squares between groups for the factor temperature is rounded to 209.3. For example, this calculation involves the difference between a grand mean and a mean value of the eight plants exposed to cold temperature, and between a grand mean and a mean value of plants exposed to warm temperature, as well as the difference between a grand mean and the mean value of the plants exposed to hot temperature. Similarly, we can do the same calculations for the watering group. The difference is that the equation now includes the letter A, which represents the number of levels in the temperature group. Since we have three different temperatures, A is equal to 3. In addition, we will use the means for the watering group.
For example, the calculation involves the difference between the grand mean and the mean height of the 12 plants exposed to a low amount of watering, and the difference between the grand mean and mean height of the 12 plants exposed to a high amount of watering. We see that the sum of squares between grooves for the watering is 112.7. Finally, we calculate the sum of squares for the interaction. This calculation involves the sum of squares of the means of each group when both factors are considered, and the means of the groups when we look at one factor at a time, as well as the grand mean. For example, this term involves the mean height of the plants exposed to warm temperature and a high amount of watering, as well as the means of the corresponding groups when considered separately from each other, and the grand mean. The sum of squares of the interaction is 105.3. Finally, we calculate the total sum of squares, which is simply the sum of square differences between all observations and the grand mean. Let's summarize what we have done so far in an ANOVA table. We simply add the sum of squares that we have calculated so far in the first column. We previously calculated the SSE to 68. Note that this can also be calculated by the total sum of squares, SST, minus the other sum of squares. It is simply what is left out of the total sum of squares from our model. Next, we work out the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom of the between groups are simply the number of levels in each group minus one. For example, since the fact that watering has two levels, the corresponding degrees of freedom is two minus one. The degrees of freedom of the interaction is the product of our previous numbers, and the degrees of freedom of the within group error is the product of the number of levels of the two factors times the number of observations in each group minus one or the total number of data points minus a times b. Next, we calculate the mean squares, which is simply the sum of squares divided by the corresponding degrees of freedom. For example, the mean square of the interaction is 52.7, which is calculated by dividing the sum of squares by the corresponding degrees of freedom. Next, we calculate the f-ratio, which is the mean square value divided by the mean square of the within group error. We therefore divide the first three rows by 3.78. For example, the F ratio for the factor temperature is 104.7 divided by 3.78, which is 27.7. Finally, we use the software to compute the p-values from an F-distribution based on the F ratio and the corresponding degrees of freedom. For example, by using a software, we can calculate the area to the right-hand side of 13.9. In an F distribution with 2 and 18 degrees of freedom, which will give us the p value. We see that both factors are significant as well as the interaction. We could therefore conclude that there is an interaction between the two factors, which means that the effect of watering is dependent on the temperature. Remember that we should be careful when we interpret the main effects when the interaction term is significant. In this case, we could continue with the postdoc test that we'll discuss in another lecture. This was the final lecture about two-way ANOVAs. Thanks for watching.